Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominant. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. Coming up in today's episode, we have extended highlights from today's game, New Zealand vs Ireland, played at Headingley Stadium, Leeds. So it's the episode that kicks off week three of the Rugby League World Cup as New Zealand face Ireland it in what is a do or die game for the Irish side. If they win, they still have a chance of qualifying. If they lose, it's more than likely Lebanon will be the team that goes through to the quarterfinals and Ireland will have to wait for 2025 for a better World Cup. Defeat at the hands of Lebanon leaves Ireland's World Cup hopes hanging in the balance with round one, one round of fixtures left. Unfortunately for them, the last game is against the formidable New Zealand side. They have already wrapped up two wins and a whopping 102 points to their name across the group stage. Ireland will no doubt be giving everything they have and Michael Maguire's men are likely to face their sterning challenge, sternest challenge of the tournament so far, but ultimately, New Zealand should prove too strong and emerge victorious in this game. So who have each side picked in, the, in their starting lineups? Well to begin with we have Joey Manu at fullback rather than the stand up position that he occupied in the last game. While it is a back four of Jordan Rapana, Peter Hiku, Britton Nakora and Ronaldo Molotalo. That means Sebastian Chris drops out of the 17. In the acting half roles, we have Dylan Brown and Jerome Hughes who makes his New Zealand debut. As the Storm Man is looking to impress and push his way into the starting lineup. Jesse Bromwich was captain the side after being brought into the starting lineup. Taking the, arf the armband off his uh, prop forward partner James Fisher Harris. His brother Kenny is in the second row with uh, Nelson Asafa Solomona in a big New Zealand pack. Jason Tar uh, Joseph Tarpenny also finds his way onto the pitch at loose forward. From the bench we have Isaiah Papali'i, Kira Foran who dropped down from acting halfback, uh, sorry halfback against Jamaica. Jared Wahara Hargreaves is also added to the bench, while Isaac Liu is also involved. As for Ireland, they go with consistency in the back line, with Richie Myler, the senior twins, Chamberlain and King in the centres. Luke Carey and Joe Keys continue to lead the side around, but there's a promotion from the bench for James Hassan, who starts at for, uh, prop forward. Josh Cook comes in at hooker for Brendan O'Hagan, who drops down to the bench, while George King is at the other forward after being promoted from his forward position. James Bentley and Frankie Holton continue there to impress at second row, so they will continue in that position with Rowan, Mar uh, Rowan and Michael, the York City Knights gentleman, an Irish born, being at least forward. With O'Hagan, Harry Rushton continues out from the bench. Dan Norman is promoted to the bench after miss both Robbie Mulhern and Liam Byrne miss out. Byrne from suspension. And Henry O'Kane is the newcomer to the bench. And today's match referee is Robert Hicks as the Englishman takes control of this important game. Now with the anthems out of the way. New Zealand gets set for the hacker.
It's the first set that Ireland received straight from the kickoff and on tackle one, Innie Senior has been forced back and the ball comes loose. The referee stops the game and says it's a knock on, tackle one, but arms in and Ireland use their captain's challenge straight away. So the video referee actually determines that Richie Myler, who gathers the ball there, is the one that causes the lost ball. In the tackle, he reaches it out. There. And New Zealand have great field position on tackle in the island half. New Zealand head and feed. Ireland have survived the early nine minutes with a couple of scares, but Tarpenny put the ball down and Jordan Rapana. Uh, playing the ball facing towards this near touchline to where we're looking. And George King goes in. And the hands are in to play the ball with Fisher Harris and for Jesse Bromwich. And the penalty is given. A second penalty. And the referee says wasn't clearing. While the Irish coaching staff calling for two points so here it is the incident but they're in the air forcing the player back that's fair play by New Zealand and then Ireland out trapped the New Zealand hand in Bisharis couldn't get his hand out and Ireland have decided to go for two with Ed Chamberlain on kicking duty tonight and here is that kick Lights are up, Ireland hit the front, 2-0. Ireland have started throwing the ball about in their own 30 meter line. And James Hassan offloads the ball. And it goes to Brandon Smith off the floor. The acting halfback is still going because no one is stopping him. It's like a arrow chesty brink going through. And it's New Zealand that are back in the Ireland half. After a six again call is being shouted. James Fisher Harris takes the ball in. Solid defence so far from Wales. That's uh, Ireland. And after Jerome Hughes gets ad hoc, he finds. Now Brandon Smith goes ad hoc. It's Jerome Hughes who breaks four would be Irish defenders to score left of the balls for the opening try of the game. Ireland's defence has been a little lacking, but New Zealand are always invasive, so that could be a part of it. Here we go again, the offload, Brandon Smith picks it up, and like a wrecking ball, he gets through the would-be tacklers, who are just grabbing his shirt, waiting for the referee's hold. Get in the tackle. And then the ball slows down, but Jerome Hughes sidestep, gets past Cook, Gets past Hassan, Myler and Bentley are not able to stop him all over the line. Good try by New Zealand. And it's their, acting, it's their halfback, a talisman, that gets over the try line. Amber Raiders, Jordan Rapana is on kicking duty again today. And he slots it over for 6 points to 2 to New Zealand. Ireland are pinned down on their own try line yet again after a six again call and a ball strip penalty is given away by Ireland. And they reach the last tackle, New Zealand. Ball goes right to Jerome Hughes, who steps inside and kicks right for Rapana, who has enough time about him to stop himself from going out and scoring the second try of the game. Great effort by New Zealand and a well played from the uh, winger. First glance, I thought it was offside, but I think it was just because, well, the kick inside the 10, crossfield kick, and he wasn't marked, basically. It's try time. Here's that step. There's the kick right on the money. 
And Frapana didn't realise where he was. Try number two. Rapana's attempting kick number two of the day. He shots jag in kickoff. A uh, kick doesn't make it this time, and it's ten two to New Zealand. Islander back defending their try line again, and after a second attempt tackle on James Fisher Harris, as it looks like George King is tired, the referee is saying you're the one that's got that's causing this mess about at the play of the ball as James Bentley is involved again but the referee has definitely picked out the New Zealand gentleman but then a good hit by Bentley forcing the New Zealand attacker backwards but Jerome Hughes comes to the fore again and his kick inside the man sees the try go over for Peter Hiku Another try for him during this World Cup. Great offensive kick by Jerome Hughes. Just a simple play to be fair. Kick into the in goal area, then chases and the numbers outnumbering the island outside backs. Great run, great kick, great pick up and try. 14 2 to New Zealand. Jordan Rapana looking to extend the kick, uh, the scoring, and he does so. It's 16 points to 2. So New Zealand are coming out from the kickoff on their first set of six, straight from the kickoff, should I say. And they decide to work the ball to the right hand side. First of all, Dylan Brown is picked up, and then it's an intercept by any senior. Who has a free run to the try line. And that's his fifth Rugby League World Cup try. Well done, Lewis Senior. What a World Cup he's having. Here it is again. Brandon and Smith get dot jumps out from Martin Halfback. And the next pass on is intercepted by Lewis Senior, who goes in on the right edge. Well done from the young Irish and Huddersfield winger. Went to KR at the end of the season. Or is it Innis? I get the twins mixed up, so I apologise. But for now, Ireland are back in it. 16 points to 6. Here is the kick. Can Ed Chamberlain take it to 16 points to 8? No, he hooks it across the posts. And Ireland stays 16 points to 6 down. Half an hour gone. New Zealand are back in the Ireland half. And Jerome Hughes has got the ball again. And he's eluded the Ireland defence. Finds a ball outside to Petter Hiku. For his second try for New Zealand tonight. Good effort from the centre. And Jerome Hughes is stamping his authority on this game. Here it is again, attacking from the 40 meter line, and Jerome Hughes steps outside of Luke Geary. Who, and as he was getting tackled, he's able to get the ball out to Higu, and the centre has an easy run to the line. A halfback doing all the work, showing how good he is. There's the stats so far, Jordan Rapana's two from three from conversions in this game, and he's on the kicking duty again. It looks like that he's curled it out wide and misses another one. New Zealand though are still 20 points to 6 up. Ireland see out New Zealand to, uh, to complete their set. But Ireland are in their own 15 metre line trying to get out. Good defensive set but the ball is still in Ireland's heart. We're going to look this through because New Zealand's defence is enthusiastic. Ireland have missed 33 set uh, tackles at this point. Harry Rushton has got the ball here, but this is showing how tough uh, uh, the New Zealand defence actually is. It's getting tougher as well because look at this. Oh, that's a high shot by Jared Wahara Hargreaves. And we're all in. 
that's a, a tough eye shot and the referee is hit, going to deal, deal with it here's the hit bang oh he didn't miss his chin there did he oh doesn't get better if you see it from this angle either bang it's a hard hitting man that's over the borderline this time So what's the decision for Jared Wahara Hargreaves? The referee's called him over. Is it red? Is it yellow? Ten minutes. That is quite lenient and I think he knows it. New Zealand now down to 12 for 10 minutes. We'll be back until three minutes past, sorry, seven minutes past the second half. Island they'll make a rod for their own backs as right from second tackle. The ball is lost by Hassan. Now the ball is flung out to the wing. Great play there. And then Adam Molitalo dives over in the corner. New Zealand score despite being a man light. Island sloppy. Did they get halfway line fever? Great diving effort. Island made their mistake off this pass. Couldn't be taken in by the Irish substitute. And Jerome Hughes got the ball wide to Dylan Brown. Brown found Ronaldo Mulatalo in space. And he dives over in the corner. Dylan Brown with a nasty cut there which he got about 20 minutes into the game has taken over kicking duties that's his angle that he's got and see if he can extend New Zealand's lead no he hooks it and doesn't quite have the length it's 24 points to 6 to New Zealand don't matter about 12 men New Zealand have raced into a 24 points to 6 half time lead but the talking points are, should it be a red or Jared Wire our groups? Ireland are defending deep yet again, and it looks like any senior has come up with a ball. But the referee calls back as he had already done a six again due to not markers not being square at the play of the ball. So New Zealand are peppering this island line just after half time, despite being down a man for next two minutes, to be fair. Got to say, the referee has been generous with the slow play of the balls. It's been other infringements that have been coming into this. First of all, Dylan Brown is tackled on the left hand edge on the second tackle and already identified. There is an overlap for New Zealand on the right hand edge. And it's Luke Keary versus Jordan Rapana. Did he get over the line there? He dots the ball down. And there's a question of did his feet go into touch? Robert Hicks calls it up as a try. Here is the attempted try. Rapana's feet are up in the air. Trying to keep his, best, his feet up in the air the best he can. And he stays in. Looks like he does. Yeah, he's gone over the try line and they see green between feet and the white line. Got to say, Headingley's touch line markings are narrower than usual. Still wide, but they're usually about a ball width wide, these, the white line. But here's the video referee decision. It's a try. The partner's in again. 28 points to 6 to New Zealand. Here comes Dylan Brown's attempt. But he can't hook it into the middle of the pitch. So, it's still 28 points to 6. The Ireland have got a 6 again. But there is a strip of the ball where Jerome Hughes comes up with it. And it looks like John Rapana has hold of his legs when going in. 
can they seem to get away with it in New Zealand? The referee not seeing the winger coming in to help out with the tackle. Here it is again. Barna comes in as the third man. I'd say that was a ball steal. Then, New Zealand lose the ball. And the referee says knock on at this point. So, you can see it now. He, you can read his lips. He said challenge. And the referee is asked to do a captain's challenge. Here's the incident. Is Joe Key's hands still in there? He's let go. And then the ball comes out of the back. If it was coming anywhere, it was coming towards him rather than that way. Here's the incident again. Joe Key steps away and the ball comes loose. Is his hands in? Don't know. Can't tell from that position. There's a rule that New Zealand keep the... If it's inconclusive, they keep the challenge. So what's the decision here? The referee's definitive. It's a knock-on. And it's Alan Edenball. New Zealand lose their challenge. New Zealand, though, are back attacking in the island half. And the ball is worked out to Isaiah Papaliti, who hands off two Irish men, gets past another, and James Bentley and Richie Myler get a hold of him it's on the last tackle. And it looks like a crash ball at this point. Dylan Brown ducking his way through. Then he's asking for a penalty, which he does receive, as it looks like James Bentley has caught him with a high shot. That's what's been given. That's what it is. Straight from the tap, the ball's given to James Fisher Harris, who hands off, who gets by two, hands off another, Richie Myler, and he scores with the header of the ball to finish off the celebration. 55 minutes in, it's 32 points to six with the kick to come. Here's the high shot again. To be fair, it's James Bentley's second. It was a swinger a little bit high, just trying to grab hold of the ball and completely got him in the face. Then it's just a simple and direct crash ball for James Fisher Harris to get over the try line. Simple stuff, not taught strong enough in the tackle and New Zealand extend their lead. Dylan Brown still on kicking duty, not from two. And this is possibly the easiest kick that he's had all night. 10 meters out, that's 18 meters away from the try line. And he hooks it across the goal for another miss. I'm sorry for laughing in a little bit of derision here, but doing with a kick in. New Zealand's kicking hasn't been good all tournament. Ireland seem to be coughing up penalties at the wrong time in the wrong places. And this time Joe Keyes has been done for trying a ball steal on the ground. And New Zealand are back on the attack, this time with Joey Manu and Lou going forward. And Ireland are at sixes and sevens to be fair against this New Zealand attack. Dylan Brown is standing up in the tackle still. It takes four men to bring him down. That's Ireland losing the tackle count. But then New Zealand, the ball goes to ground first of all for, and finds its way into Jordan Rapana's hands. Rapana is tackled. We're only on the third tackle and we're in the Ireland 20. Ball is offloaded in the, in the play and Kenny Bromwich is held up near to the line. The next tackle proves very, very profitable for New Zealand as Jerome Hughes gets over the try line for another try to the number one ranked team in the world. There was some tough tackling going in on Hughes. Got one to the face, I think, but he gets over for the try. Here it is again. Jerome Hughes steps off his left foot. Miley goes high. And then Bentley comes across. Missed. 
opportunity to defend island but Hughes gets over that's what we've got Jerome Hughes he banged his back into the post that's why he's a little bit in pain there here's a view of it properly gets over the try line Bentley tackling him forces him into the post this time it is Dylan Brown's conversion that extends the lead to 38 points to 6 Easy one from right in front of the post this time. And it looks like Jerome uses Knight. Finished. Bit of pain, but two tries to his name. James Fisher Harris is having a rampant, a good old time today. He is rampant, finding all the gaps in the Irish defence to get forward as New Zealand are again on the attack. Reached the last tackle and Kieran Foran, he's come on from the bench. He's seen kicks for the left edge and Kenny Bromwich comes up with the ball to dot down but the referee is not sure about if this was a totally clean try checking for contact in the air onside offside and if there was any escort here is the kick Kira Foran has come on the pitch and his kicking game has been sublime from moment one obviously with this kick just to the right sort of area to put up a challenge between the New Zealand man and the Irish defender Joe Keyes looks as if he's shepherded the New Zealand player out of the way so no matter what it was going to be a penalty at the bare minimum so the kick comes in, there's the blatant shepherd, then it's a fumble by Ireland, i.e. Ed Chamberlain. It goes back though, but because of the New Zealand attack of Renato Mulatalo getting in Senior's way, unintentionally, he can't pick it up, and Kenny Bromish just snaffles it to score. Here is the decision. One, two, three, four. Right time. New Zealand have 42 points to six ahead. Dylan Brown scored his first kick. Now from his natural side, he gets another one through the centre. 44 points to six. And it could get silly. On the kick at the, on the last, Katoa did not miss Richie Myler when he went to catch the ball. Nice little bruise on the right cheek. And Ireland get a bit of breathing space to get out of their own half. Still hard going as this is New Zealand and they're hitting hard. Ireland uh, get into the New Zealand half on their set. Probably how many metres did, have they got? 25 metres? And it's Luke Keary that starts pulling the strings. No, it's Joe Keys with a fantastic kick into the corner. Chase ball in his senior. And he get a double double. Molly Talos been forced to lose the ball. And he's got in again. Or has he? The referee was about to give it. But now consults with his linesman to check whether the ball was grounded by Molitalo in the tackle. But on the field. Says it's a try. Just checking the contact and the grounding. So here we go. First of all, Joe Keys. Great kick to the corner. Onside, Lewis Senior there? I'd say yes. And then it's a chase. Is he getting a double, double, double? Three games, six tries. Multalos flies, gathers the ball, but it's not tackled yet. Momentum still going back, his arms not down. Then Senior forces him back. Does he lose the ball or was it taken? But Mulitalo doesn't know. Senior drops the ball down. From another angle, it does show that Mulitalo just drops the ball backwards. He gets the ball down, the, the young Senior. Lewis Senior. Now here's the decision. 
try number two of the game. The Irish boys are still scoring points. Six tries in three Rugby League World Cup games. Yes, we've had the player score four, two in each of his three games. Fantastic. Jokey's kick is on the money. And the chase is there. Just about determination, this. Keeping it. Ronaldo Molotalo awkward. And he gets the ball down. I'm loving this kick. I really am. And the ball goes. Got it down there. Ed Chamberlain back on kicking duty. One from two. And he pushes it right to the posts. 44 points to 10. New Zealand have been very entertaining during this game, but they have something of a weapon and a half in their team. As Joey Manu shows his strength, speed, and agility to get over that try line yet again. It's the 78th minute, and it's 48 points to 10 to the New Zealanders. Fantastic player, a superstar in the making in the NRL. Quite simple. He took the ball's first receiver. The Irish tacklers are tired. They've been defending all night. Joey Manu just goes over. Easy. Easy play. Dylan Brown is taking his time, as much time as he can, to give Ireland the respect they deserve. But Robert Hicks does this. Look at the time. 31 seconds left and he calls it off. But anyway, Dylan Brown is on the kicking duty once again. And guess what? He misses. And he knows that's disappointing. So does he. It was a demolition. New Zealand 48 points to 10 shows you how many tries New Zealand scored. The better kicker, we're above 60. What can you say about that game? Well, it's quite simple. Jerome Hughes announced himself to the Rugby League world on the international stage. What a player he is. He's a leader. Two tries tonight and sets up many, many others. New Zealand may find their rhythm when it comes to the quarterfinals and just getting over the over the games at this moment by not putting as much effort in. To be fair, they should walk this this group and they have done. Uh, they've almost got 150 points from their three games, but they've conceded a few, quite a few sloppy tries to be fair. Once they clear that up, it would mean much, much better New Zealand side. But will they be without Jared Wahira Hargreaves for the quarters and the semis? They might come up against Australia in the semis, so they've got to do something. Be interesting to see. Tell me what your thoughts are on the game in the comment section below as we are coming to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video. Right? Also, please remember to like, subscribe and share. And also click that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming in your way in the near future. But in the meantime, please remember to stay safe. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you in the next episode.